Howdy folks, good morning. It is Sunday, September 12th, 2021. I'm over at the Stump Pass Beach Park, Beach State Park once again. Because you know, the castaway vibes are just never enough. But today, I want to focus upon a particular flower that I stumbled upon while I was on my little hike out here on this barrier island that borders the Gulf of Mexico and the Lemon Bay. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? Alrighty. So this little patch of the trail that I enjoy walking on, I like to call it the Patch of Madagascar, or the Madagascar Patch, however you want to name it. Now, you may be thinking like, why am I calling it Madagascar? Well, as I hinted in the beginning of my video, there's a particular flower that actually comes from Madagascar. And here it is. We've got ourselves the Madagascar Periwinkle. Now, you may be already thinking, you know, since it's from Madagascar, a completely different country on practically the other side of the planet, that it may be invasive. Well, many Floridians or biologists believe that Madagascar periwinkle is somewhat borderline invasive. So it's kind of like in between of not invasive and being invasive. Because generally, the Madagascar periwinkle doesn't really crowd, it doesn't really overcrowd any of the other native vegetation here. Because, of course, we have a chance to see our sea grapes and even our... Uh, ground cherry right there that little green dot that you that I'm pointing at that's ground cherry and if even our sea oats as well so I mean there's still opportunity for native plants to grow here but yeah this was essentially introduced to Florida mostly for ornamental purpose that's how oftentimes most exotic plants get here now, with that being said, a characteristic of the periwinkle is this. So, when you actually look at the flower itself with its petals, for me, it kind of reminds me of looking at something of like a windmill, right? Because of the five petals and just the way that they're shaped. It just really gives me that reminder of a windmill. And... With that being said, oftentimes the leaves along the stem, uh, they're, they're basically opposite of each other, right here, as you can see. And they are considered a shrub. And on average, they'll probably grow two to three feet. Now, what's fascinating about the plant is it's also been highly used because of its medicinal purpose. Now, a couple of decades ago, there was actually a discovery that was found in the plant. And it was a particular chemical that was found. And this chemical that I speak of is known as vinblastine. And for those of you who don't know what vimblastine is, it basically refers to, well, vimblastine is such an important chemical, especially for treatments of blood-related illnesses, such as leukemia. Because the chemical has been found to kill off excessive white blood cells which is usually what happens in leukemia and other related uh, illnesses now. And it's also been useful in 
helping with cancers too, like testicular cancer as well. So there's even potential, or not even potential, but it has a usefulness in helping to combat uh, cancers as well. I mean, it's a bit more specific, but that's like the general uh, highlight right there. Now, with that being said, vinblastine is actually listed as one of the most essential chemicals or treatments according to the World Health Organization. So what does that tell you? It's one of the most essential methods of treatment according to them. But that's what I mean, mates. Like, understanding the medicinal value of our plants really gives us that insight into what the natural world can provide for us. So it's just, it's quite remarkable. But yeah, that was the Madagascar Periwinkle. And as always, I will share an article so you can read up a bit further on it. But I'm sure many of you have stumbled upon the plant on some of your hikes. So, I'm going to see if there are any more flora that I may find in the process while being out here. So let's see what else we can find. So give me a second, mates. Here we go. Alrighty. So, I'm actually practically in the same spot just as I was, not for just a moment ago, just moved up a bit further, closer to the trail. But another plant that I stumbled upon right here is known as the chaff flower. Now, it's actually related to the other amaranths, which are basically considered to be a well, like an ornamental plant, more or less. But they're distinguished by having these heads that kind of remind you of just touching like a spiky ball, you know? Like a bunch of little spikes on the flower head. And the leaves are usually directly opposite of each other along the stem. And what's particularly fascinating about the leaves is they actually kind of have like a red outline. So that's a common distinguishing characteristic of the flower itself. Now, what's interesting is it was introduced from South America. So it makes it questionable whether it is invasive or not. So it's a bit similar to the Madagascar periwinkle. In a sense, it's kind of borderline invasive. So, yeah. I mean, you can still practically find them all over the place. Like, there's some back here and even here. So, it is apparent that they do appear in clusters. Okay? So then... I just want to point out one last plant as well. So, here, I kind of pointed it out earlier, but I'm going to go more in depth with it. So, these are the ground cherries. These are also common plants that you find along dunes, like sand dunes. And oftentimes, as you can see, the leaves, they're... Uh, in a sense, they kind of are opposite of each other, but they're opposite of each other off of the vine that leads towards the actual ground cherry itself. And these are also indeed edible too. So usually once they reach further maturity, they'll turn yellow, as you can see that one right there. So these are actually indeed native to Florida. So by no means do they act as an invasive plant. But yeah, these are actually very valuable for our wildlife and serve as a food source. But they're also known to look very similar to that of tomatillos. And you can kind of see why. Tomatillos, 
in general, they kind of have like a hard outer surface or outer skin layer. But then, I'm trying to break it open so you guys can see inside. Pardon me. There we go. So that is the actual food source right there. But yeah, you can definitely see that it hasn't fully matured yet. But yeah, this is what a ground cherry looks like. And yeah, you can practically find these anywhere along the uh, beach because you can practically only find them in the dunes. That's about it. But yeah, they kind of do act as a vine as well, as you can see to my left. So all right, you guys. Hey, I hope you learned something of value regarding our uh, some of our plants. More flora that is found in Florida. And I hope you got something of value from it. Especially that Madagascar periwinkle. That's a, that's a special one. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. And once again, enjoy your Sunday. And journey on a journey is outwards. Take care, folks. See ya.